Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iPadOS 15 has quite a few new changes in it this year. And while there's not as many visual changes, there's some nice refinements, but I wanted to share with you the top iPadOS 15 features you might not know, or maybe you just haven't seen yet. And so the first one has to do with spotlight search. Maybe you installed an app, you're using the app library. You can't figure out what page you left that app on. You can now delete an app directly from spotlight search. So pull down, go into spotlight search. Here's a game. I really like mini Metro press and hold on it. And now you can delete the app directly from the spotlight search. So tap delete, delete again, and it goes away and it's no longer on your iPad. So it's nowhere to be found. It's not in the app library. If we go and type in mini Metro, you'll see it's not there. So it's deleted from the iPad altogether. And you can now do that from spotlight search. Now there's quite a few new sh keyboard shortcuts this year with iPad OS 15, but there's one thing that's a little bit helpful that I found when using this every single day. Now, anywhere in iPad OS 15 and even iPad OS 13, if you're using an external keyboard, whether it be this magic keyboard or something else, if you press and hold the globe button, you can see all the shortcuts available for that specific area you're in. However, there's a feature where you have suggestions that pop up as you're typing along. Let me go into notes and within notes, we have this suggestion bar down at the bottom. And as you can see, it just has the microphone so you can dictate whatever you want it to, to type. However, maybe this is in your way. So you're just saying, hi, how are you today? And maybe it's in your way. You can grab this and swipe it off to the side. So let me show you that a little closer. So this here with your suggestion box, you can now grab it swipe it off to the side. And so you can hide it on either side, wherever you'd like, just get rid of it if it's in your way. So that's something that's new. They redesigned this little text box here with iPad OS 15. If you want it out of the way, you can just swipe it out of the way. Now there's a new feature that Apple introduced with iPad OS 15 and iOS 15. That's very helpful depending on which application you're in. So for example, if we go into settings and we go into accessibility under accessibility, scroll all the way to the bottom and you now have per app settings under per app settings, you can add an app. Under add an app, maybe we'll select Amazon. Let's add another app. Maybe we'll select a different one. Maybe we'll go down to mail, for example. Under Amazon, tap on Amazon, and you can see that we have the option for different text sizes, such as larger text, bold text, button shapes on off labels, reduce transparency. We can increase the contrast. We can differentiate without color, use smart invert, reduce motion and autoplay video previews. And this is adjustable per app now. So this is not really just an accessibility option, but is rather something that could really help with maybe you have a hard time reading the font size that's in mail, but Amazon is just fine. You can now adjust it to whatever you'd like, and it can really help depending on the app. Some apps have smaller text than others, and it's great to see you be able to customize this based on an app by app basis. So that's available now as well. Now, if we go to a website and we want to maybe print this website, for example, so we tap on these three dots, Apple redid the whole print screen on iPad OS and iOS 15. However, if we go to print and you'll see it pops up the print dialogue, we now have more options, but the best part of this, at least for me, something that I use all the time on the Mac is if you have no printer selected and you tap on print, you'll see at the top, it says PDF document. It automatically creates a PDF out of that specific website or whatever you're printing. And then all you need to do is copy it or save it to files and it saves it as a PDF. So you tap on save to files. It pops open, asks you where you want to save it, and it will have a save dialogue wherever you want on your iPad or external drive. So you can now save that as a PDF that you can come back later and edit if you'd like to as well. Now, if we go back into the notes app, maybe we're in a note and maybe we're working and we want to bring in music. Now, before we could bring in slide over music, just like this, we can move it around. If we press and hold these three dots, we can drag it all over the place. We can bring it into split view, for example, bring it back out, bring it back into slide over when we're done with it. Maybe we're not using it. We can slide it over like that. It's off to the side. We knew about this from before. However, you can now move this to any side you'd like. So if you want to bring it over to the left, for example, you can bring it over to the left and then just slide it out of the way. When you want to bring it back in, just slide it back in. They've made this 
or easily accessible on either side of the display, however you'd like. So while it's not an amazing feature, slide over is much more versatile now. And if we bring this back out, maybe we slide it off to the side of the screen, go back home, go back into our app switcher, you can see that we have the option to go back into it as well. So it's a much easier way to navigate and customize it however you want. Maybe you're left-handed versus right-handed and you like the slide over window on the left-hand side. You now have that option to do so. So that's something new in iPad OS 15. Now also, if we go into the Photos app, for example, we can now drag and drop something anywhere. You may have already been familiar with this to a point, but maybe if we press and hold, hold for just a moment, keep holding, move it out, tap on two more, we can now drag those into any app we want. So slide this out, go back into notes, drop them into notes. It takes just a moment and now they're there. So it copied this directly into notes and you'll see these are just some screenshots I had from before. So it's a nice way to copy and paste things from different apps from one to another. And you, then you can select multiple, just like you can select multiple apps to move them around. You can do the same in photos, for example, or with anything else. So again, just tap and hold and then tap on what you want to add. So it's super easy to use. Now, another nice update they've brought with iPad OS 15 you may not be aware of is maybe you have an iPhone app that you use regularly on your iPad and you're used to having to use it in portrait mode instead of landscape. You can now use that in landscape mode, for example, Instagram. So here's my Instagram page and you can see I'm using Instagram in full screen or at least full screen in landscape mode, you can use it just like you want. And it could be any iPhone app. It will work the same way. You can use it in landscape or portrait mode now, however you'd like to use it. Now, if you play a lot of games on your iPhone or iPad, Apple's thought of that with their new focus modes. So maybe you want to go into focus. You can bring down the control center, press and hold on do not disturb, and you'll see there's a bunch of different focus modes. However, you can create a new one by tapping on new focus and it pops up and gives you the option of a gaming focus mode. Under gaming focus mode, it will silence all notifications. It says, don't miss out, allow important people and apps to send notifications immediately so you don't miss anything important. Important. You can share a status and you can turn it on automatically when you connect a wireless controller. So you now have the option to create this. And if you hit next, you can now select the people you want to get notifications from, whether that be a loved one or a parent or someone else that you just want to hear from regularly, you'll have that option or allow none. And then you can allow notifications from apps or not at all. So it will completely silence everything with the gaming mode on and it will recognize it immediately. Also, you can allow time sensitive notifications as well. This is fully customizable, just like a normal focus mode, but works when you connect to wireless controller. So it's really convenient. Now, finally, with game controllers specifically in the future, you'll have an option on iPad OS where if you're using an Xbox controller or a PlayStation controller, PS5, for example, and you're using that and maybe you want to share some footage of the gameplay you just had. Maybe you had an epic moment in Call of Duty. You want to share that or save it. You can do that with the share button on the controller now and save 15 seconds of gaming footage. Now, this is not available at the time of this video, but can be made available from developers if they choose that within their apps so they can add that code to their app and have the option to save game footage if they want to then you can share it to your friends and so those are just some of the top features that were not announced by apple but i thought i'd share with you about ipad os 15. let me know of any other great ones you might have found in the comments below i'd love to hear from you there and if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper of course i'll link it in the description like i normally do if you haven't subscribed already though please subscribe and if you enjoyed the video please give it a like as always thanks for watching this is aaron I'll see you next time.